What up, what up, everybody? This is Double G for the Fight Game Podcast. John is here with me. If you're watching on video, you see him right there. John, what is going on? I'm going good, getting ready for the holidays, man, right around the corner. So this podcast is actually pre-recorded because I'm on Wrestling Observer Radio duty all week long. So because of that, we couldn't do our normal show, which is reviewing NXT and AEW Dynamite in our normal time slot. So instead, I thought, you know, rather than take a week off, I don't I don't like going dark. Let's just put some pre-recorded stuff together. And I had this idea. And because it's the holidays, it actually worked out. So we're going to lead this thing off here. But you're also going to hear from other people on this website. Denise Salcedo, Lance Storm, Brian Alvarez, and Dave Meltzer. And I'm basically going to ask three questions. I think I, I may have asked Denise a fourth question. but <laughs> And I'm going to have John and myself answer the, the questions here. And then after we're done, then you'll hear from the rest of everybody. The, the, my favorite comment was uh, when I told Lance kind of the order of how I was ordering these videos. He said that I mid carded him. <laughs> well, I'm thinking I'm thinking baseball sense. So I'm leading off. You're leading off. Trying to get a hit, trying to get ready for the score run so the guys can hit me in, you know? Yeah. So, you know, we don't we don't normally post our video on the, the YouTube channel, but everyone will get to see your smiling face here. They get to see my nice hat. They get to see famous dave in the background <laughs> chilling not moving with his old uh is that like an old iMac or something back then? yeah oh yeah the old uh, iMac <laughs> i used to have i used to have one of those back in the day <laughs> okay so here's how i started just about every one of the uh the short interviews that we did and i'll, and I'll ask you the same yeah. your favorite moment in wrestling for 2021 it could be a match could be a Ooh. segment could be a show could be anything Favorite moment. Well, my favorite God man, favorite match was Walter and Elia at Takeover. It was really good. But damn, I really love Brian Danielson and Adam and Hangman <laughs> Page. So I would say there's a lot of good wrestling overall yeah. in 2021. So I'm, I'm gonna go with that because I saw you know Jeff Cobb, Okada had some great oh, series yeah. of matches. So I think uh really good quality professional wrestling matches this year. Um, I really enjoyed it 2021. So my answer, you'll hear my answer on uh, the, I think it's the Brian Alvarez segment. I mentioned it there, so I'll, I won't repeat it again here. Um, okay, so next question is, um, we are, th this will be up right before Christmas. So I was kind of thinking like holiday memories, Christmas mm -hmm. memories. You're a big Christmas guy. You're also a big Halloween guy. Mm -hmm. Um it could be from your childhood. It could be from being a dad. It could be being a, a newlywed. Like, like, do you have a like a Christmas moment that just sticks out in your memory as like your favorite one? I can't narrow down the date, but we used to always do Christmas Eve at my grandparents' house. All my cousins, we'd be over there, all my aunts, uncles, and we would stay up to like midnight. And right at midnight, it's Christmas christmas day so we open all our presents and then we would just crash out at my grandparents house like oh my God. so i that happened for it felt like it felt like 15 years but probably was like 10 or or or, or eight but you know that was like the fa favorite memory is like going to my grandparents house for the holidays and i remember the last few years it just kept getting smaller and smaller yeah i was yeah. branching out you yeah. know so but yeah that was the best at my it's my uh my dad's side of the family so I have, I have two from my childhood that I can very much remember like it was yesterday. And one of them is not even on Christmas Day. It was actually probably, I don't remember the exact time frame, but probably a couple weeks before Christmas because I am in the back seat of the car and we're driving home from, I was probably visiting my grandmother or something. And so, you know how like uh sometimes you know the you put something in a bag and the way that the bag is sitting you can kind of see what it is mm -hmm. and so what was in this bag in the front seat was the um 
It was the old original LJN WWF figures, but it was the ring and it was the cage for the ring. Oh, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And so I could see the WWF logo on the box kind of sticking out. And I was bummed because I don't like being spoiled. Like, I, 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 I yeah. like the surprise. I don't like, you know, sort of cheating in that way. Uh, the, you know, the whole surprise is, is where everything's at. And uh, and so, you know, that that Christmas, I think it, there was like this giant box of like there was probably like six wrestling guys and then there's like a cage and then there's the, the mm-hmm. ring. So that's very yeah. memorable. But several years later, gosh, probably like five years later. Uh, the other one was the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Gosh, I was I was already a teenager by then. I was probably like 14 or 15. <laughs> but I kind of marvel at it because. Those were not easy to find. And somehow my parents got the Super Nintendo on Christmas morning. So those, those are my favorite. And the ones with my kids, like, yeah, you know, the, the kids, you we just you just spoil the heck out of them. But uh, is there um, is, is, is there something on, on the kids list that that was kind of like the gift? Yeah, this they're, year? they're sleeping right now. So I can say, it. Uh, <laughs> well, at least. OK. Chloe was she's getting older now, so she's a little harder to, to pick because you know it used to be dolls and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, she does like her iPad, you know, we try to control her time, but we share one within the family, so we got her own. I was able to get one. And on, you know, and but then Hunter, he's obsessed with Spidey and Amazing Friends. It's like the Disney Plus cartoon. And there's like this uh Spidey like uh for, you know uh what do you call that? Special force, you know, the 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 mm-hmm. house, the uh home base or whatever you want to call right. it, right? The Spidey house, he calls it. He's asked that every day. And it, you know how it's hard to find that. It, and because of supply chain to issues, right? Things went, went up really high, but luckily we got it because at a really, really, really good price at Walmart. So we actually got nice. the regular price. So yeah, so he doesn't even know. It's like just been this big box in our garage. He's just been walking by. <laughs> it says Walmart on it. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool about this. Funny about you about Nintendo. You know, I got the original Nintendo for uh, Christmas one year, but mm-hmm. I, I didn't ask for it. And l- looking back, I remember appreciating that because you know a lot of the kids, you know wanted it probably couldn't get it. my parents just got it for a for me specifically i think they i think they asked around well, what's the hot new toy yeah, yeah. Want? and i think i didn't ask for it because i probably would never didn't think i would ever get it right so sure. i remember getting the original nintendo and that was a blast and we all hooked it up at my grandparents house and got the duck hunt all the uncles my <laughs> uncles right Heck shooting yeah. ducks Heck you know? yeah yeah those are the good times yeah. all right so uh last question and the, you know this this is a little bit longer question because I want to give you a couple options here. Mm-hmm. Is there a piece of advice that you've received in the past, some sort of wisdom that you've you've uh, taken from somebody else and used in your life, or maybe even like a, an earned like skill set just as you've lived your life over these last years? You know, we're both now in our forties. We've yeah. we've lived life. We've you know we're married. We kids and and all the all that so you know is there something in either of those two scenarios that uh that you utilize in your day that you would like to share with folks yeah you know at, with being a parent now we try to create memories as much as possible and you know now with you know with the pandemic and stuff it's a little harder mostly at home than you are going someplace so always trying to keep that special moments and going like do little things to big things right like you know, I like go crazy for right now. Chloe's in school and she has like little performances. Like, I just can't wait to go and yeah. show her support. And, you know, those I think those little things just last. Right. And then um, Christmas time, like, you know, I, well, granted, we love Christmas. We love Halloween and we probably go nuts on our house even anyways. But like we we really want to do it because, you know, growing up. We know that we talk about, oh, I remember mom and dad, our house was always the house with all the decorations, stuff like that. So just do your best to keep create great memories for your kids. I think it's in the long run, I think it makes them better you know, human beings going on and then they get older. So all right. I, I have two and one with the sort of the married and, and kids theme here. Uh the first one is make if so this is if you have kids, especially if you have young kids, make time for date night date night is the single most important event 
in your you know in your week or in your month because uh you need the one on one time obviously you need to feel like you know that mm-hmm. you still have that that relationship but also at the same time is you know, I, I've read some studies about this, and and the children, the kids, actually see the time that you put into your own relationship, and so they kind of see that as like, oh, that's what's a healthy adult relationship. Mm. And so then, then as they get older, they they remember like, oh, this is how you know this is what mom and dad did. They made time for each other, and so then that builds you know a healthy understanding of that for them as well. So that's one. Make yeah. time for date night, even if the kids are small. Utilize your family. Now, you know, you you have three. Mm-hmm. And so I know, you know, there, there's got to be some babysitters who are just like, oh, man, I'm going to make some money off the Laracas. Actually, we found a great babysitter. She's a 14 years old. She loves kids. You'd be impressed by this girl, Carrot. She she has a, a re, she had a resume she has classes <laughs> she took classes for cpr all that stuff and it was my wife's client's daughter that my wife's client was like no you guys got like you, you said you guys got to make time for yourselves yeah. go out do something my daughter would love to watch kids that's what she wants to do and so she, we tried her out one night and she was great and katrina when she came home she's like look at this resume she handed me before she because you know, she had to drop her off she doesn't drive yet right she's 14 and it was the cutest thing so she's actually coming over tomorrow to help out with Katrina's has to run some errands. So, yeah, yeah. So we got a, 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 a another babysitter on us so we can because we know we, we we it's been a while since we did not even date night like you said. Yeah, so. yep. Very important. Okay, second one, and I think I think this is beneficial to sort of the world that we live in today. Uh, when I gosh, I would have I don't even know the age, but I was probably between 12 and 13 no between 10 and 13 or so and i was big sports fan right everything was sports everything was sports radio you know it was watching you know these players and will clark and joe montana and jerry rice and so my dad said you know when you when you watch these guys the 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 person that you're rooting for is the on-field persona it's the person in the game you don't actually know the individual, right? You just sort of know what they can do in the field. So, you know, when it comes to the people making mistakes, you know, celebrities have the the magnifying glass on them. He's like, he said, you know, until you are in their shoes, you can't really judge them as human beings. And now there, I think there are very, there, there are definitely folks who do really terrible things, you know, R. Kelly and Bill Cosby, who you can judge. You're like, okay, the, I know what those guys did bad. But a lot of times, you know, you'll see, you know, the the media and, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, Tom Brady does X, Y, and Z. And uh, all of a sudden he just gets, you know, some, yeah. maybe some negative information. And so I was took that because I was like, oh, like that's one side of the story. The media, you know, I, would, I wish I had Tom's side. So until I have Tom's side, I'm not going to judge just going to let it just sort of sit there that that's that's the deal and so that has helped me especially in journalism which you know i don't podcasting isn't journalism but sort of my mentality and like when something happens uh you know with some of the the wrestlers that that you talk about or you know management like it's really about both sides of the story and yeah. not just about one the public side you know, you sort of have to understand and 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 as much as you can unravel that ball of yarn to learn more and more and more and more and more, you get more context and then you can sort of make, make your own decision or whatever. So I've always used that in uh, in just, you know, currently. Right. So lot, lots of judgments going on. So, yeah. Uh, OK, cool. So I think we're going to throw it to Denise here. My The interview that I did with Denise. But thanks to John, we got out of uh, doing our normal Wednesday show, w- went from our normal hour 30 to 15 minutes here. <laughs> and Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's going to be our quickest show ever on a Wednesday or on Thursday morning, right? Still got the same payday. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So get ready. Uh, for those who are listening on the audio side, um, thank you for listening. For those who are watching on the video side. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of what we got going here. 
All right, bringing on my We're Live Pal partner, Denise Salcedo. How's it going, Denise? What's up, Garrett? Glad to be on here. Yeah, we could not. I could not have done this without having you on here. So, uh, okay, so happy to be included. <laughs> so I have a couple of questions that I've, I'm going to ask everybody, essentially. But I do have one specifically for you that's a little bit different. Uh, we'll get to the pro wrestling question because you did a whole show on your best moments of pro wrestling and stuff. So I'm sure you can pull from that. Um, but the one question I has as a content creator, because you are pretty much either producing content, being a guest on other shows, um, putting content that is not necessarily podcast specific for you, but for channels and such pretty much every day. So, you know, these last couple of years, and I, I guess we could say specifically for 2021, is there anything that you learned about yourself in this process? Like when it comes to, you know, just being able to work as hard as you do? It's funny that you asked that because I hadn't even thought about that. Like, what have I learned about myself this year? I think if I could say that I've, if I learned anything, I would probably say that I could do it all if, if and when I have like when I really think about my schedule and how I plan things out, if I can get everything down to a T, then I am able to do as much as I possibly can. I think this year I learned that, you know, not being afraid and putting myself out there is really the best way to like grow. And it's funny because I feel like this hasn't been something that I learned about myself, but it's something that's worked for me is that I'm usually like pretty terrified of going out there and putting myself out there and, and, you know, asking people for things, you know, little things like that. Like some, I don't like to ask people for things. Cause I always have this sense of, Oh, I'm going to get rejected. I'm going to get rejected and all of that. But lately I've been challenging myself to go out there and basically say, Hey, this is what I want. Let me see if I can make this happen. And even if it's a no, it kind of ends up still working. It's mm -hmm. it, like, it works out. And sometimes even when I get a no, I still kind of get a yes. It's really hard to explain, but I've noticed that if you want something, don't be afraid to go out there and get it. Like, don't be afraid to ask for it. That's something that I kind of learned about myself this year i think yeah, it's, a, it's a great lesson especially for people who want to get more involved in something like you know what you do and and to a lesser extent what i do as well all right so uh, here here are the here's the first question and i think this will be easy because you've thought about it you've done a whole show about it do you have a favorite moment in 2021 of uh, pro wrestling related so obviously everyone's going to mention the CM Punk thing, but I don't want everybody to come on here and be like CM Punk, CM Punk. So I'm going to give you something different. And it may not even be that different, actually. I'm pretty sure you'll get more people saying this. Um, so I was obviously at All Out. And you were too. Yes. And it was just like for me being there and getting to experience all these debuts back to back, when being there and knowing that you're witness witnessing something so huge and so drastic in like the history of professional professional wrestling and you get to be there. I feel like for me, that's one of my favorite memories is just being able to really feel like I was part of something like, Oh my God, I was there when Brian came out, when Adam Cole came mm -hmm. out, etc. And so the CM Punk thing, the debuts. And then I also want to add a W double or nothing, because that was the first event that I think I got to uh, the first wrestling event I got to go to, you know, after COVID and all of right. that. So to be able to be there at that event and like feel, the atmosphere of people and there was such a good show with a lot of really fun moments so I feel like that one really stuck out to me too and I didn't realize how much that show stuck out to me until I started going back and revisiting some of my favorite moments in wrestling right right you know for actually recording shows I think my favorite moment was when we did the we're live pal with Brian and Dave in Andrew's hotel room and like if I thought about it, I, I you know, I probably would have got kind of nervous about hosting that show because it's the most attention we were going to get because we had Brian and Dave on it. We were not behind our computer screen, so I didn't have any notes that I could just like <laughs> put up, you know, and, and, and read from. And so it was like that. If I would have thought about it a little bit more, I think I would have got more nervous. But I think that was the most fun 
of any show that I've done this year was doing it with you and Andrew and Brian and Dave. That 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 was a blast of a show to do. And we did like zero prep for that. Like <laughs> we went into there and I was like, I don't even know what we're talking about. I'm just gonna show up and hope to God that I have something to contribute to this podcast. And that's kind of like how I went in there. But I just remember walking in and there were so many people in this tiny little yep. room. And even though I knew everybody in there, when you kind of walk into a room full of people it's one of those things where you're just like okay hold on a second i gotta you know try to find my place you know in in this small little room but i think that was really fun too uh, it was a very cool experience i hope we get to do that again soon yeah that'll be a blast yeah we had on you go in the room and it's like oh rich andrew's partner for matt man oh andrew's wife jessica oh the team <laughs> the matt man production team with all of the equipment and all the mics running around like it was amazing it was ab absolutely yeah. amazing to do that show I think there were like, what, like 10, 15 people in like this little small room. I don't know. It felt like 10, 15 people. I don't think it was 10, 15 people, but it felt like yeah, it yeah. in like Especially one in tiny, tiny little room. room. All right. So you mentioned already that how you sort of celebrate Christmas, uh, it being on uh, Christmas Eve for you. Christmas is kind of open, but do, is there a, a moment and it doesn't even have to be pro wrestling related it could be family family related it could be fiance related it could be from your childhood like does you have like that one favorite holiday moment that just always sticks with you so i don't know if i have one particular holiday moment i think for me it's so many different moments that I've had like throughout like the holidays, you know, family and stuff. But I see I don't have like a specific one. But I do have when I was a kid and waking up and going to go get my Christmas gift from Santa Claus because I believed in Santa Claus and all of that. So I always remember waking up running to go get my gift under the tree, running back to go wake up my mom and be like, mom, mom, <laughs> Santa came, Santa came. And my mom's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice, Denise. <laughs> and, you know, so I always remember that. I remember uh, a lot of the early Christmases that I spent with my fiance when he was with my, when he was still my boyfriend, yeah. because um, there was this really funny, this is a really funny one. So we always give each other like really nice, like meaningful gifts just because we know each other so well. We know what each other likes. And I just always remember all of those dates that we had where we went out and we got our gifts. But there was one Christmas. So this is really funny. So there was one Christmas when we first started dating. And, you know, you know, young couples, you break up, you get back together, you sure. break up. So we broke up during Christmas one time. And wow. it was funny because he still took me out to dinner uh -huh. and gave me all of my presents and Get this his sister tried buying the gifts that he had bought for me off of him because she wanted the gifts too because he had bought me like <laughs> a pair of uggs that year like a bunch of other girly stuff that i really liked and he was like no i'm gonna give them to denise and he still gave them to me that christmas but i remember that christmas so well because we went out to dinner we had such a great time you would think like oh these people are a couple no technically we were just friends during that day but um i still think about that it was a really funny moment like we should have known we were gonna get back together back then but we didn't know that, you know, how long did it take to get back together after that? not long? So we took like a couple months of a break years ago and it was the dumbest breakup ever because we were broken up. But we saw each other every weekend and every weekend he still took me out to like all these places <laughs> like, oh, let's go play mini golf. Oh, let's go to the theme park. Let's go have dinner. Let's go to the movies. And uh, and he always tells me like you are so uh, he just tells me like you are so spoiled that even when we were broken up, I was still taking you out left and right. So um, I should have known back then. But those are just some of like my favorite. I guess yeah. you can say memories, but there's so many, you know, being with my grandparents, opening gifts for my grandparents is always really nice too. So a lot of good memories. All right. Last question here. This is a little bit of a longer question because I want to give you a couple options. Is there a piece of advice you've received from somebody in the past? You know, I'm kind of all about wisdom right now, wisdom that we've all gained and that we can share that, that you would like to pass on, or maybe Maybe something you, uh, a new skill set that you learned about yourself that you gained from over 2021 that you would like to pass on to people, um, you know, that, that, that a trick that you've, oh, this makes my life easier or this makes my life better that I would like to share with people. 
Yes. So I actually have a really good one, Garrett. And I think that you, anybody in no matter what walks of life, you can go ahead and apply this to. So I don't know about you, but for a long time, and even now I still struggle with this. So this is an ongoing thing that I like to make sure that I'm like, nope, we don't think that way anymore. We're thinking a whole entirely near direction. Mm -hmm. So especially with social media, I feel like social media myself included, we post out there what, you know, the best portions of our life, like, yeah. oh my God, this happened. This was so wonderful. But we don't post a lot of the bad stuff that happens or a lot of the down moments that happen. So I think that sometimes when you're seeing somebody on social media be so successful and you start to think to yourself, oh my God, my life is terrible. I'm not anywhere where I want to be. And so for the longest time, for years, I kept comparing myself and my journey and my career and my my goals to everybody else. I was comparing myself to everybody. And it just put such a, uh, it, ha it hampered me down. When you're comparing yourself to other people, it brings you down. And you start to think, oh my God, I haven't accomplished anything that I wanted to accomplish in my life. Where am I going? I haven't done anything meaningful, whatever, right? So you start mm -hmm. to really kind of punish yourself. And I caught myself doing that a whole lot. And this last maybe year and a half, I noticed that I stopped doing that to a much larger degree than I was doing it before. I do, like every now and then I have like little moments where I start to compare myself to somebody else. I'm like, nope, because I am not that person. I am me. This is what I'm good at. This is what I can do. And one of the things that I did was I wrote down on my whiteboard and I, I had it on there for like a couple of months where it was uh, keep your head down and just focus on you. So that's the one thing that I keep telling myself every time I feel like I'm starting to compare my success to, to the success of somebody else. I think to myself, keep your head down and focus on you, because anytime that you waste your energy on what you don't have or, you know, what you should be having or, oh, I didn't get this opportunity, uh, you waste your time that you could have been. Uh, being productive. So like, for example, whenever like I'm feeling down, if I was, let's say I had a bad day, right? And I'm feeling down and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, today was such a failure of a day. And if I waste any, any, any er energy on that, that could have been, you know, a day that I created a video, that video could have gone viral, that right. video could have gotten thousands of views. So I think to myself, okay, anytime I'm wasting any sort of time spending it on and negative energy was when I could have been doing something positive. That's great. That That's amazing that you, especially in the world that you live in, where a lot of the, the content and, and the tweets and stuff, that's all counted, right? Like there's something right in front of you. You can always see exactly how you're doing and you can still pull yourself back from that and go, okay, I'm just going to focus on, you know, the thing in front of me. That's, that's great. Um, no, this was perfect. I'm thankful that you, that you did this and that you're a, a part of this show. Uh, but uh, yeah, so thanks, Denise, and have a great holiday. Thank you, Garrett. Happy holidays. All right. This first time I've actually ever talked to Lance in person. We've shared Twitter messages <laughs> over the last three years. But one thing, I, I don't know if people know this. When I first started recording with Dave for the website, Lance was uh, probably my best feedback person who was kind of letting me know how the volume was and how the show you also even said, I don't know if you remember this, but you're like, you need like a tagline that, that ends the show because it's too abrupt. And, and my ears are like, we're surprised that the show was over. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. So that I want to, I want to thank you for that. Very, you know, it's always great to have somebody who actively listens like you do. And, you know, you'll send me stuff here and there about the show, but I appreciate that. So, Thank you for doing this. And uh, I have a, a couple questions for you. Um, the first of which, which may be a little hard for you to answer. You probably had to think about it a little bit, which is what was your favorite moment in pro wrestling in 2021? Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit in that I'm not going to limit it to a moment, but just sort of an aspect, if, if that's all right. And, and it's the, the open door policy that has been throughout the industry with the exception of WWE this year. I think that is what's made me enjoy, look forward to, you know, get into pro wrestling more in 2021 is the feeling that it's a little more like the wild, wild west, that more options are out there 
that I can tune into Impact and see Jonah show up after he was on New Japan Strong. And I can see Finn Juice, and I saw Kenny Omega and Christian in Impact. And you could see on, you know, the NWA show, someone from Impact. You could go to, hell, though, you know, Final Battle had FTR um, show up and Deanna Perrazzo show up. And, you know, you had Kenny with the AAA title and the Impact title acknowledged on AEW. And to me, that provided a realism in the industry that we're not just all in these fake bubbles, that if it happens in the world of pro wrestling, all of these shows will acknowledge it exists with the exception of WB that stays in their own universe. But that makes me excited and that keeps me interested. And I think it's, it's key because we had so long with WWE where we've seen every match. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like the only way they can make a match fresh is add another stipulation to it this time or put more bodies in the same match. And it's like in 2021, the idea of a dream match kind of has returned. Like the Briscoes versus FTR. It's like, that's exciting to me. Is that kind of the one that, that, if you if you could think of a match that hasn't happened yet, is that one of them that's high on your list? That that would certainly be one of them. Like I've always been a fan of the Briscoes. Like there's just something authentically strange about the Briscoes. And their promos and their matches, it's like they're just 100 percent the Briscoes. And they're a unique entity, and they're this rarity, much like the Bucks, really, in that they've stayed a tag team predominantly. You know, there was that one singles run that uh, I think it was Jay that had, but it's like they're a tag team entity. And I'm such a big fan of FTR as a old school pro wrestling tag team. And the fact that you get to show up on someone else's door and lay a challenge. It's like, there's excitement there. And, and that's, that level of excitement, I think, when everybody just stayed in their own little tribe, didn't exist as much. And I really like that aspect of 2021 that you don't know what's on the horizon and there's there's shit to look forward to. So this show will be up on Christmas Eve. And so I was kind of wondering, do you have a favorite holiday Christmas moment or, you know, either from your childhood or maybe from being a dad uh, with your kids? doesn't even have to be really wrestling related actually it's funny I, I i had planned on telling you one and then i just thought of one now that my first pro wrestling show i ever went to my buddy mick which actually be a great tie-in because um, depending on when this drops i'm dropping my wrestling buddies podcast on, on on i think the friday of christmas eve yeah the next day i think my buddy Mick from high school, he got wrestling tickets. We didn't get a lot of wrestling in North Bay, but there was a, you know, it was a lot of international wrestling guys and AWA guys. It, was, it wasn't an AWA show, but a lot of AWA guys were on it. He and his brother got tickets to this show for Christmas. And his older brother didn't really want to go. He wasn't nearly as into pro wrestling as Mick was. But I guess their parents probably thought they can't just get their one kid a ticket to this show. They got them both. So his brother Minto didn't want to go. And Mick asked me if I wanted to go. And it was on December 28th. And I went to my very first pro wrestling show. Opening match was Wayne Bloom versus Mike Enos. Like weeks before they formed the the wrecking crew in the wow. AWA. Um Medusa was on the show. There was, I think, Rockers versus Bad Company. Um, at the time, there was a Wahoo versus Manny Fernandez. So you can imagine those two quite probably chopped the living hell out of each other. That's a that's a really good show, actually. Yeah, and I remember too that the show started late, and I'm like Joe Punctual, right? So I'm sitting there in my seat. We're I think front row, if not front row, damn near. And I'm like, why isn't this show started? Why hasn't this show started? And then I see this dude walk in and he's pulling a roller bag. And I'm like, oh, who the hell's that? And he walks down the aisle, walks around the ring, goes in the other, because there was 
faces came from one side, heels came from the other. And I didn't know who he was. I'd never seen him before. And he leaves. I'm like, hmm. And then finally the show starts like 20 minutes late. And it was Wayne Bloom. He's coming to the ring for the opener. And I'm like, that's the son of a bitch that's making the show start late. <laughs> you see that you see that kind of stuff happen on uh, on indie shows, like small indie shows, but never I, I, I don't imagine I've seen that happen like at a at a big WWE show or anything. Well, this was a show at the North Bay Memorial. Uh, uh, what was the name of the building now? Uh, Memorial Gardens in North Bay, Ontario, a very small town of 50,000 people. So I'm quite sure Wayne Bloom thought of it as a small indie forum. But again, my first pro wrestling live event. And I wonder if Mick didn't get tickets for Christmas, I wouldn't have gone to my first pro wrestling event. And who knows if I'd have followed on in that path. Wow. Wow. All right, so I'm kind of uh, I'm interested in pieces of wisdom that that people use or, or have, and you know we've all kind of though th we opened back up somewhat this year. Um, you know, there's always the threat with the pandemic of of things shutting down again, and I was kind of wondering, uh, is there a piece of advice you've received in the past, or maybe some sort of earned skill set that you've gained over the years just from living your life uh, that you know, you pass on to people, maybe even students of yours from the past, just to kind of, you know, deal with the, the daily rigors of, of life. Hmm. I don't know if this qualifies, but it, the, the one little, and it's something my wife did for me as a gym guy. And, and I've again, been lifting, lifting weights my whole life, going to the gym. I've always got either wrestling gear or gym gear in my car. My car always smelled <laughs> like the gym, which was not favorable, which is why whenever we did family outings, my wife would always insist on taking her car. <laughs> and then my wife got this tremendous idea of getting a small lace or mesh fabric bag and filling it with coffee beans. And she tied it up and it's just a little small pouch of different flavor of coffee beans, depending on what smell you like. And she threw that in my car as the greatest air freshener for a small area that when you get in my car now, you will smell a hazelnut coffee rather than gym shorts, <laughs> which, which is a huge upgrade. If you've ever gotten into a car, <laughs> Or, or, and again, you probably need a larger bag if you've got anyone in your house that, that plays hockey. I think a hockey bag is the worst smelling sports bag um, in any sport whatsoever. But as a gym guy that's got his gym shoes and all his other crap in his car 24-7, that bag of, again, a hazelnut or a flavored coffee is a tremendous, tremendous lifesaver. That is brilliant because what smells better than than coffee that co very you know there's some things but very few things smell better than coffee and you know when you get a car wash sometimes they'll offer you oh you know we'll put this scent i never see coffee scent it's always like cherry or some sort of new car smell someone should they, they should have like a coffee scent to it but i guess we could make our own now thanks to your wife's brilliant idea here yeah as a coffee addict it's like that's a, a nice smell when you get into your car because yeah. I've, I've had that too, where if you've ever, you know, you hit the, the drive through of your favorite coffee place, you put your car and your, your coffee in your cup holder. But if you have to stop somewhere else and get out for a minute and you come back, it's like, as soon as you open that door, it's like, ah, oh, it's like, you're ready to start your day and feel better about it. So, uh, Amazing. Yeah, the coffee air freshener is a wonderful thing. That's awesome. Hey, Lance, thanks for doing this much, uh, love and respect and, all good stuff to you and your family over uh, over the holidays and just in general. I, I hate to say over the holidays because I would like to say that just in general for the near future, for the long future. All the best in your future endeavors, if you will. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Lance. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Brian Alvarez, do you remember we were driving up north? I think it was for one of the Cow Palace shows the same day. And we had a conversation. We were talking shop, talking podcasts, and you and you said something to the effect of, "If you decide to get into podcasting, 
like you'll you'll never get out because it just becomes like all encompassing of your life. Do you remember this conversation? <laughs> Actually, I don't, but it sounds like something I would say. <laughs> because this would have been this would have probably been right around the time I started helping you out with Wrestling uh, uh, Observer um, Radio. And then I was just asking you like, oh, you know, I'm kind of thinking of doing some other stuff. And since then, like I had a different podcast uh, on Blue Wire, which we then transitioned to uh, F4W Online. So thank you for that. Thank you for creating this this great website. And I guess I can thank you or my wife can thank you from me doing so many hours and hours of audio and video. Oh, um, she loves me. <laughs> OK, so uh, I told you I have three questions for you. This would be not too not too long here. Um, favorite moment in pro wrestling of 2021. Is there like one thing or sort of a, even if it's not like a, a singular moment, maybe a theme or something that happened in 2021 that you, you really enjoyed in professional wrestling? Oh God. I, I, uh, I wish I'd got the questions in advance. I hate questions like this because, the thing with uh, you asked before the show, like, you know, what days are you doing observer live and everything like that? Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I do a show, I do observer live Monday through Friday. I do observer radio three or four times a week, Brian and Vinny three times two figure four dailies. So, you know, there's like 18 shows. And then I watch every day. I'm watching a show like, you know, now it's two shows on Friday I watch Impact for Lance, which I regret agreeing to. <laughs> it's not a bad show. It's not like a bad show, but it's two more hours. Yep. Like yep. by Thursday night, I'm just like, can I have one night? But no, I got to watch Impact. And then Friday, it's okay. I got two more shows tonight. And I got to watch them tonight because there's probably something on Saturday that I got to watch. So the point of this is like, I would have to sit and look back at what even happened in, in 2020 because you know, I remember there being like great things that happened and I remember there being horrible things that happened, but you know, it's, it's just like, you know, when people talk about the news cycle, well, you know, we're in this news cycle and, and, you know, there's going to be another story in two days and it's going to be a totally different news cycle. I mean, that literally is what happens in wrestling. So I, like when I was a kid, we all have better memories of what happened when we were a kid. And part of that is because when I was a kid, there wasn't all of this stuff to watch. And so I would watch my show every week and I'd watch a pay-per-view. And if there was like a, a Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect match at SummerSlam 1990, and it was like an awesome match, bro, I would go back and I would watch that match over and over and over and over again. So like today I could go back and turn the match on and like my brain, I'd remember every spot that they did. Like it was yesterday. Now, I don't have time to watch anything twice. I mean, sometimes I'm watching Raw and it's like, I got to be in the air with Dave. Like, they're going to show a replay of the finish and I skip past it. <laughs> I go, I just go right to the next thing. I don't even watch the replay of the finish. So there's so much stuff that happens that, like, if you gave me a list of great moments of 2020, I, I could 2021. I, if I said 2020, if I said 2020, yeah. that's my that's my fault. It's but, 2021 but, now. 2021. Is that right? I don't even yes. know what year it is. But if you gave me like a list of great ones, I could probably rank them. But there's so much stuff that I've forgotten. And the funny thing is with fans too, you know, the the hook debut. Yep. It was on on Friday. And dude, I thought the hook debut was awesome. I think the guy is great. I think he's got tons of potential. I think he's got star presence already. But dude, people are talking about, oh my God, this is the greatest debut in the history of wrestling. And I'm thinking... <laughs> have we forgotten Dominic Mysterio debuted in a SummerSlam main event with Seth Rollins in like 20 minutes. And dude, when that match was over, all people did was talk about how awesome Dominic was. And Braun Breaker's 11 matches in, you know, this dude's had awesome matches in his career. Everyone's forgotten Bad Bunny. He had his first <laughs> match ever, which, you know, was a WrestleMania match. It was a really good match that people were great in. But like, there's so much stuff that happens that people have totally forgotten Ronda Rousey's debut. You know, her WrestleMania debut, that was fantastic. But, like, so much stuff happened that now Hook has a three-minute match on Rampage. And people are like, I can't remember a better debut. Because if you just saw four of them within the last two years, 
So I yeah. can't answer yeah. the question. I rambled a long time to tell you I couldn't even answer the question. But there were many great moments and there were many bad moments. And unfortunately, it's just like we're on to the next one. I think uh, something's muffled on your on your on your speaker there on your phone. Uh oh, is it my finger? How's that? There you go. You're now you're good. Um. So okay. So the I reason why I yell asked... louder to get past my finger. <laughs> the reason why I asked that question because I I was like, you know, I, I had all these questions and I was like, wow, I don't even like I I need to think about this too because like you said, it's a little hard because there's so much stuff going on and I think you know the hook thing is very reflective of how we watch because everything is so week to week and like it, it, it kind of proves your point which is we forget things that happened not that long ago because you're just moving on to the next thing it's just content over content over content the thing that i that i thought about uh so i i was doing some podcasts uh in 2020 and, and early 2021 with john moxley and he wanted to focus on ufc like he's a giant ufc fan you know, if he, if we talked about pro wrestling, it was very minimal because he didn't, you know, he doesn't want to get aggregated and all that stuff by these blogs. So one thing he did say, and I can't remember if this was uh, on air or before, but I can say it now because he's talked about it. But he said the thing that he couldn't wait for was when they get back to live audiences because Eddie Kingston had never yeah. performed in front of the big audience before. And so I remember when he said that, I was like, wow, like, that that's really interesting. Like, you know, when, the, when we get back and then we had the double or nothing match, they opened up against the young bucks and the crowd went so crazy for both Moxley and Eddie. And I always thought back to what John said about that. And I think that was probably my favorite moment in pro wrestling of the year, just because he, you know, he, he knew, he knew what the deal was. And, but just to see Eddie get to experience that was, uh, was pretty amazing. So I think that would have been mine. Um, okay. Second question. Holiday moment. So this is going to be played on Christmas Eve. And do you have a favorite Christmas or holiday moment? It doesn't even have to do with wrestling. It could be from your childhood or now that you have your own children. But anything that sticks out and, and probably not Christmas show related, which will be up after Dude, this one. <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember anything that happened on the Christmas shows ever. So it certainly wouldn't be the Christmas show. <laughs> Does it have to be Christmas or like any holiday? Any oh, I mean, you know, any time or you know, Thanksgiving or Christmas around this time frame. That was just my thought or about the question. God, all these questions I don't even have a good answer for. <laughs> I, I hope the third one is exactly like this. <laughs> holiday moments. I've never really been like a, a big holiday guy. But I mean, you know, the, the best holiday moments are the ones with my kids. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't even like, you know, early because, you know, it's probably just been the last couple of years, like being able to take Paisley out for trick or treating where she actually gets what trick or treating is because, you know, she's five now and we didn't go trick or treating last year because of the, the, the COVID. Yeah. And then, you know, the year before that she was three, she don't remember anything. So this was like the first year that she really got to experience like I'm going to dress up and I get to pick a costume and like we're going to go to all these houses and get candy. They're going to give us candy. She didn't even eat candy. But like the whole concept <laughs> of getting candy is really cool to her. So uh, there was that. I remember we had like a, a just a 4th of July parade in, in Cannon Beach and she just had the time of her life at this parade and she had these little flags she's waving around. But I guess my my favorite holiday moments would be stuff like that. This Halloween was actually a lot of fun because uh, Hanale is, is just old enough to start saying a couple of words. Mm -hmm. And so they both had these, these matching baby Yoda costumes, which is cute. They're like, they, my, my wife dresses them as twins, even though they're three years apart. <laughs> so they go out in the same costume and, you know, Paisley's going door to door. And she's getting all these, these, all this candy. And she's going, Hanale, come on, let's go to the next door to get candy. And you could you could actually ask Hannah a question and she would answer. You'd say, Do you like candy? She would go, Yes. So that was cute. And then we started we went out at like 4 30 when it was light out. And then uh, it starts getting dark. And we went up to this house at the top of the hill, which they go all out with Halloween. There's like, you know, uh, the laser lights on the garage. So you see like the big creepy dude on the garage, and they got all these, 
you know, creeps in the yard and everything like that. I thought this is the coolest house. I can't wait to take Basil here. So I walk her up there and it's now gotten dark and she takes one look at these creeps and she starts screaming and running. <laughs> and so we had to like chase after her because, you know, there's a, uh, it's cul-de-sac so there could be cars. So yeah. we had to chase after her and tackle her. And she's like, let's go home. I've got <laughs> enough candy for today. And that was like the end of, end of Halloween. But it was, uh, even though it was a traumatic experience for her, it was actually a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, those are my, my holiday memories. I never was a holiday guy. I was always, I was always so busy working that it was like, but it was working in the sense that I was accomplishing something like, Oh, the site is growing. The site's yeah. getting bigger. And it was kind of like this holiday. Like I don't have a show today. This is going to put a, the momentum is going to fall away. If yeah. I take a day off doing shows, that's why we always did Thanksgiving shows on Thanksgiving night. We would do shows on Christmas, which if Observer Radio's on Christmas, like it's going to be done. I don't know about <laughs> this year, but it always was. So yeah, those are my holiday memories. Working. Do, do you do you and your wife do Elf on the Shelf? No. Okay, good. No. I, I couldn't Claus. imagine. My, my, I mean, you know, my kids are so old now, but I, I now that I have stepkids who are a little younger, but they're past that stage, I couldn't imagine doing Elf on a Shelf but I hear it's kind of the big deal with the little ones. No, they don't know Elf on a Shelf. All right. You're not going to like this question. You're probably going to hate it even more than the first two. Don't even say, who are your 10 favorite wrestlers of all time? <laughs> Rank No, them. you would actually, you would probably answer that one perfectly. Actually, I okay. we could answer that one pretty easily. All right. So I'm into kind of like the wisdom thing from, from people, The you know, anything... Uh, is there a piece of advice you've received in the past that you've kind of carried with you? Maybe an earned skill set that you've gained over the years uh, that that you've sort of liked to pass on. Um, just something that you know you sort of you know. Obviously, life is hard. You know, you you just mentioned you know building the website. Like there was some stick to itiveness that you had to create this website. Is there anything that you know you, you wisdom that you've gained that you would like to share with people? I would say that uh, the number one piece of wisdom that I would give about anything is to save your money, kid. Uh, that is one, obviously, that I heard from from Buddy Wayne. But, you know, I, I had uh, been into saving money even before Buddy said that because, you know, I, I always wanted to not be poor. That was like a goal because it's not fun when you have no money. And, uh, I had many years where I didn't have a lot of money and it was, uh, you know, money, this is the old comedy saying that, uh, you know, money does not buy happiness, but it is better to have money than to not have money. It's not fun to not have money, especially when something happens and you need money and you don't have any. So I was always like from, you know, I got out of high school and it was time to figure out what I wanted to do, uh, in college. And I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew one thing, and that was I wanted to run a business. I did not want to work for somebody. I wanted to run a business, and I wanted to run a business that made money so that I would not be poor. So, you know, college was all about, you know, I, I got to do this, I guess. But, you know, I want to run a business, and I'm not going to need a degree to run a business. I would need a degree to work for somebody, but, you know, to run a business – Unless you're, you know, you could be, your, your business could be like, I'm a vet. And then obviously you would need a degree, but I wasn't going to be a vet. So it was, you know, probably something involving whatever. So, you know, I went to school and I, I did 18 months or whatever of what I was good at, which was English <laughs> writing and stuff like that. And I always just figured that I would do something involving uh, publishing. I would, I would write my own books. I would publish things or whatever. And that's really how the, the newsletter actually got started was, you know, I loved wrestling, but, you know, even then I knew that I was not going to be like a famous wrestler, even, even doing all the stuff with the YWF. It was like, I like doing this and it's fun to do, but you know, I wasn't an idiot. I, 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 I didn't read the observer or anything, but I was smart enough to know that bro, you're five, six, 130 pounds. Like you're not going to be in WWE. You you're got not invited to the King of Indies. What was that? You got invited to the King of Indies. I did. And I like doing Indies, but Indies was always something that I did because I knew that it would help my perspective writing and talking about wrestling. I didn't do it because I wanted to like go further with it 
because at the end of the day, I don't like to leave the house. I don't really like to travel much. I mean, it, whenever I have a booking that's, you know, I always wrestled around here largely, but then, you know, from 2007 ish on or wherever, where people would actually call me and they'd be like, you want to come do this show in Indiana? And I'd be like, Indiana. And then, you know, I'd always have anxiety before I had to leave. And now I've got kids and a wife. So I even have even more anxiety leaving the house. So I hate leaving. But the point of this was I always wanted to have a business. And so, you know, even when I was dirt poor and living with my parents, I had I started a mutual fund like when I was 18, 19 years old. And I couldn't put anything in that mutual fund, but I put something in. And in every single month, I put something in there. And I started saving money from, you know, day one. And at the beginning, it wasn't a lot, but I've always just saved, 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 saved. And I bought a house with it. And now I just keep saving because I have kids that are probably going to, you know, their mother is smart, so they're probably going to go to college. <laughs> so I've always like, that's the biggest piece of advice I would give because whether you own a business or whether you work at a job that, you know, they get away with paying you $3 an hour, like you can save something and it doesn't have to be a lot. It shouldn't be, well, if I can't save a thousand dollars a month, I'm just not going to bother saving anything. Like I would save twenty five dollars a month, and you know, after after I got the the short lived deal with Iada, it was like I put away a hundred dollars a month, and I was like, my God, look at this money I'm putting! I'm socking away a hundred dollars a month. So if you just like put away a little bit of money every month, and you know, spend a little less on this or that, I mean, you're gonna have a much more uh, psychologically comfortable life, knowing like if something goes bad next month, I'm not gonna be evicted. So that's like the biggest advice I would give anybody is just save a little bit of money every month. Just save a little bit of money and don't touch it. Just save it and leave it in there. All right. We'll end with this. You mentioned Buddy Wayne. How, what, what was the emotional feeling when you got to see his son wrestle in his first uh, independent match? Well, I'd seen him wrestle before. Um, but you know, it was, uh, this kid is so good. And, you know, I, I have pictures from Buddy's house where like he's five and I'm holding him like he's he's just a little baby. And I've told the story a million times, but I used to go to Buddy's and we would we would do matches. And at the time, you know, he's probably like five, five, two, five, three, a hundred pounds. And I would play the bully and, you know, he would do the big comeback and blah, blah, blah. And I always thought, man, if I don't fall apart, then when he turns 18, I'll be like 47. And dude, we could have an awesome match. And then one day he was like six feet tall <laughs> and he's doing space flying tiger drops. And all of a sudden it was like, this match is never going to work. <laughs> like <laughs> It'll never work. It'll never happen. Because it's preposterous now. But, you know, I, I watched him have that match with Joey Janela. And, you know, Buddy always put me over to the students and everything like that. And, you know, he thought I was I was great. But, dude, his kid is, like, way better. He's so much better than I ever was. And I'm watching him in there at 16 years old doing these matches. And this, this crowd is just going crazy for him. And I'm thinking, how's this kid, like, not going to lose his mind? And he's actually a very level-headed kid. And, like, his mother, she ain't going to let him go nuts. So that's good. But, man, I mean, he's just, he's so good. And I, I'd seen him before. I saw him uh, Chicago weekend when, when I went to Black Label Pro. He did, like, a, a three-way or a four-way or something like that. And Nick, he was really good, but he was, like, 50 times better at the Defiance show that I went to and the show that I saw in Chicago, he was like way better than the previous show that I'd seen him at. So like, he's just getting exponentially better with every match. And he's working like, I don't know what he is, he's doing now, but for a while there, it was like, he's working every weekend and then he has to go home and go to school. And you know, you think school sucks because it's whatever. And then he has to go fly out and do all these matches all over the place. And he's just getting so good. And he knows, like, don't do anything stupid. And, 
he's going to end up being everything that, you know, his father should have been if his father wasn't five, five. And, you know, that was the story with Buddy his whole life. Like, Buddy been six feet tall, he'd have been a millionaire. And he said it and everybody said it. But, you know, he came up at a time where he was five, five. And that was just it. Now he's got a kid that's six, two and unbelievable at the age of 16. And he's going to be a, a superstar. So I was I was over the moon watching that match. I couldn't even believe my eyes. All right. It's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Closing the show here. Dave Meltzer, Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Uh, Dave, so I've been asking everybody, and, and I'm sure there's going to be a really hard question for you because there are so many, which is, is there one or a few favorite moments from 2021 when it comes to professional wrestling that you could narrow down and say was your favorite or your favorites? Uh, CM Punk's arrival was probably the most, um, that was probably my favorite moment. Yeah. Of the year. Um, and moments. I mean, I really liked the uh, Chicago all out pay-per-view, you know, when Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, that angle was really good as well. I'm talking about AEW stuff a lot. I'm trying to think as far as, um, in WWE, I don't, you know, it was pretty good. was the, uh, this is like recency bias, but the, uh, the Paul Heyman Roman Reigns thing, I would, but I wouldn't call it like, um, you know, one of my, like the, the biggest moment of the year or anything like that. Um, there was nothing, you know, like, uh, I mean, I, I can't really come up with like the super moment there. Um, you know, you know, one that I will remember, not because of the match necessarily, but just because of the feeling and the emotion from both women was Bianca, Bianca and Sasha Belair at and Sasha. WrestleMania. I mean, that was really big. I, it was definitely really big. Um, but it, I, I can't like I watched it and I can't say, oh, that was like one of my favorite things ever. Yeah. But it, it was it was it was something big. Um I thought Will Ospreay winning the IWGP title was pretty big. And then like the aftermath and everything like that of what happened. Um, you know, I, I tell you what, it's like personally favorite is like, um, which is, I mean, it was a super, super match, but the Shingo Takagi, Jeff Cobb match at the Tokyo dome for me was something just because of us knowing Jeff for so mm -hmm. long and then watching him have this, you know, and I mean, I wouldn't even say it was the best match at Wrestle Kingdom because Wrestle Kingdom was loaded. But to me, seeing Jeff Cobb, you know, who we've known for so long, have like a legit five star match at the Tokyo Dome against, you know, Shingo Takagi, who's like one of the great wrestlers in the world, maybe the best, but certainly right in the top tier was was something. Um, and um, the uh, the Young Bucks against uh penta and phoenix from chicago that's whole chicago show if i just mm -hmm. say, say a show even though full gear i think had better matches as a show the chicago show um the chicago all-out show to me was a show of the year and just like the feeling in so many different things you know on that night from punk's first match to um you know the the um that tag team match in the cage incredible cage match and uh adam cole and and Danielson and even, you know, Ruby Soho and Minoru. I mean, the Minoru Suzuki moment was really big because, yeah, because the, because of all the ones, it's like we kind of knew the everything was coming. You know, we knew Ruby Soho was going to be the last person in the, in that women's, uh, you know, 21 match. And obviously we knew about Cole and Danielson, but we did not know when Minoru Suzuki's music or his, the screen, it said the king. And then the music played, you know, and he confronted Moxley. That was a really because just being there in that building because it's one of those things where you um, you know when when it comes to like yeah of course if if Okada came out or Tanahashi came out in uh, you know in a U.S. arena you know at an AEW show I knew that the reaction would be bigger or Bushi but Suzuki getting that incredible reaction it wasn't a surprise but it was something of an affirmation where it's just like wow they really you know they know you know they know who he is. And they see him as a superstar, so that mm -hmm. was um, that was pretty big too. Yeah, those are good. Uh, okay, so second question here: 
Since we are in uh, the Christmas season here, holiday season, do you have a favorite Christmas season, holiday season moment, either maybe from your childhood or even being a, a parent and having young children? This is a kind of a magical thing for children. Yeah. Uh, do, I, you, do you have a memorable one? I mean, just um, seeing the kids open up the Christmas presents, like uh, I think that there was one year um, it would have been last year just because of what a downer year last year was. Mm -hmm. And having the, you know, watching the kids open up the Christmas presents last year would have been me like my favorite from that Christmas thing. I mean, not a wrestling thing. My favorite from a wrestling thing on Christmas was, uh, you know, I didn't watch it on Christmas. But it would be the Ric Flair, Kerry Von Eric Cage match from Christmas '82. I watched it like two weeks later. Um, but um, you know, I was at I was at um, I I have only been at one wrestling show over Christmas in my life, which would have been the '83 Reunion Arena with Ric Flair and and David Von Eric. Which I mean, that was just a you know, it was a good show, but it was um, and there was a lot of heat with the the Freebirds and Von Erich's Loser Leave Town when Fritz came out and blah blah blah. There's a big angle there. It was pretty exciting, but um, you know, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't like it was the, you know, the greatest anything. You know, it was just it was a fun show though. Yeah. All right. Last question here. Yes. So uh, we've been uh, all the questions prior have been sort of about wisdom and advice and things that maybe you've used from that you've uh, received from others. So it could be multiple things, but is there like a, a piece of advice that you gained from somebody? There's so many you, things when you were younger or. There's even so many things, so <laughs> many things, even, even something that uh, maybe you sort of earned just from your own, you know, living, living your life that, you know, you would like to pass on. So any sort of piece of wisdom that, that was passed down to you that you would, like to pass down to other people or just something that you kind of learned about yourself over the years that oh that geez kind of helped you you know get through things um i don't know if it's a piece of advice but i have always one of the lucky things that i've always had was um i've always had or usually usually in my life i've always had like certain things that i can always look forward to and like whenever things were down and bleak and everything, um, there was always this thing of, well, don't worry because a couple of days it's going to be Saturday or a couple of days it's going to be Sunday or a couple of days. So it's like in no matter how bad it gets at, on a certain day, you just kind of focus on the fact that it will get better and it always does. And and there's going to be something really wonderful coming up. So, um, yeah, I always try to find something in the future to really look forward to. You know, um, you know, you know, like, that, uh, different trips or some right. trips or, or just family stuff or or, you know, I mean, and sometimes it's like, you know, just, uh, you know, cool sports stuff, you know, whatever wrestling, whatever. And now that you say that, that is definitely how you get through some of these really hard observer Thursday's weeks, brutal. too. Thursday's brutal. Thursday's really the only brutal day. And it is. It's just brutal. But it's like, yes, Thursday, it's always like I always have something Friday night. And so it's always like, okay, if I'm up till three in the morning or whatever, the fact is, is that when I go to bed and wake up, the next day is going to be Friday and Friday night, I'm going to go out and have fun. And, um, you know, um, so it's like, and, and, uh, you know, I usually do watch rampage and, and SmackDown on Saturdays, but, uh, you know, um, <laughs> sometimes I'll watch, sometimes I'll watch them live, but it's usually like Friday is my night to go out. So that's usually like what gets me through, uh, Thursdays. Yeah. So this is going out to all the subscribers who, who listen to, to my podcast with John and is also going out to YouTube. So there's m more people than just subscribers. So I personally just want to say, you know, mostly to the subscribers, you know, it's been really fun for me and John to be on this website. Like, you know, it's kind of uh, it's kind of amazing, actually, if you, if you were to think about it, that this website wrestlingobserver.com f4wonline.com and all the great talent the writing from from your observers to the you know Brian's really I feel like a pioneer in this whole podcasting thing in a lot of and, ways yeah yeah and, and, and you know it, it's tremendous for for John and I to do this every week so I just want to say thanks to 
you know, the subscribers are kind of opening up to us being on the show. And I've been doing Wrestling Observer Radio with you now, uh, I think, for three years, which is nuts in of itself. So, well, it's been my pleasure. You know how much I look forward to doing shows with you every week. I mean, or almost every week. And, um, you know, I mean, people, some people know, some people know, but like, you know, obviously I consider you like one of my, one of my closest friends, perhaps my closest friend, you know, um, and, um, it's just a pleasure. I mean, I learn a lot from you and we talk about a lot of stuff. Um, and, uh, it's the, the, the shows that we do. I love, I love those shows. I, I always look forward to doing shows with you like always. And I do with Brian too. Um, you know, even though sometimes they're 12, well, they're always 1230. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. and I do look forward to like, I look forward as far as with Brian to every single show. Also, I just want, I don't want anyone to think that like I'm dissing Brian because I'm, no, I'm no, absolutely no, no, no. not. Yeah. You guys are the classic voice of, uh, of this stuff. Like to me, like I think of, you know, growing up, you have like your classic voices and radio is pretty much non-existent to me these days. Like I, I almost never listen to radio anymore, but you know, cause I've told you, but when I'm growing up, I'm listening to KMBR 680 sure. from the time I get up until the time I go to bed. And because of flukes and luck, I was able to work there for a few years. And so I got to really experience that, but now it's, it's so much podcast. So like my voice is now it's not, you know, the the drive time show. It's you and Brian. It's Bill Simmons. And so, you know, that that is you guys are, are the classic. Not, classic not, your, show. not Joe Rogan. No, no, yeah, I know. not Joe Rogan. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, <laughs> I um, yeah, I it's funny because like when it comes to podcasting, um, I mean, I I don't really listen to a lot but I always do, you know, sometimes I'll see the YouTube clips and stuff of people and I'll, I'll listen to that. And, um, but it's, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I do want to thank like all of the listeners and readers and, and at times I'll tell you what, like, this is the one, and this is the one trip you've never done is the Japan trip. Yeah. But the Japan trip is the one every year, which I haven't done in this, this year or last year, but, um, the Japan trip is always the most humbling because I meet people from like when I say all over the world, I mean all over the world mm -hmm. at the at the Tokyo Dome or or during that week. And I mean like like uh you know, more than WrestleMania. Like at WrestleMania, you know, you it, but um I don't meet as many people from different countries as I would in uh in Japan because it's like I think that the foreigners all kind of like congregate together sometimes, but it's like I met, you know, when you have someone from from china you know come up and talk to you and say oh i learned english from brian alvarez <laughs> you know or geek and love listening to podcasts <laughs> and things like that that is like humbling or people like in the middle east who go oh yeah 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 like we all like you know your shows and it's just like wow you know it's like it's pretty amazing or brazil or you know i mean morocco i mean it's like yeah of course uk and australia and canada and the united states and, um, you know, countries like that, you know, um, Germany, you're going to know people um, and Japan. But but like there would be like um, people from countries that like I never would even dream anybody's like listening from. And and it's amazing. It's, yeah. It really is. It's amazing. All right. So that that'll be it for this uh, long show that that I did here, getting everybody involved. But I, it was very important for me to do this. Uh, all the people who I've worked with on this website this year. And I hope people enjoyed it. Uh, so thank you for listening. For all the folks who, who I talked to, I'm Double G. See you when we see you. Peace.